It's 11 p.m. in Montreal, it's rainy, it's cold, and I'm about to take a Greyhound back to Boston. Wish me luck. He doesn't have duration or expertise, and he's not like Paul or Jeb, he can do this with ease. And now it's apparently too late to afford, so it's apparently a trip report. my bus leaves. I cut this way closer than I would have liked to. And what I'm worried about is that Greyhound does have assigned seats now, but they're very cagey about actually enforcing it. I would like them to enforce it, but there's a chance I get there and it was just first come first served and like the bus is full and I get a crappy seat. That would be pretty bad for an overnight trip. All right, welcome to the bus station. Let's see, Boston gate 13. Boy, classic Greyhound death line. At least it's boarding though. Look at all those stops, baby. All in the middle of the night. All right, here we go. Boston Pool 100. They are actually enforcing science seats, which is good. I got my 9AC. Um, they had a guy checking passports, and then they had a Greyhound driver scanning tickets. We're in the seat. We're gonna be here all night. Um, got waste baskets. Got a footrest, but my bag. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my bag. It doesn't really fit super well. There's like a big thing here. I can't put my bag under. I don't I don't know if it'll fit in the overhead, but you'll have to get that a shot. Alright, hey, that's a success. I was honestly not expecting that to fit. This, this thing's useless. Outlet, horrible cup holder. It's like okay, now we have these, you know, supplies, a charger, headphones, sleep mask. It's like <laughs> what do you do with this? Gosh, I can't believe I just through the sponsor of today's video on the ground like that, especially when it's not just your average ordinary Manta sleep mask, it's a Manta sound mask, the type that you can connect to your phone with Bluetooth and play white noise on in case other people are snoring. And it really helps when you're on a bus and there's other people snoring. I just hope that whatever promo code you can use to get 10% off your order isn't some loud, annoying sound bite that will completely break the immersion of this little segment here. Poor bed. You know what, this is not the intended use and I hope I don't forget this stuff, but uh, honestly, this is kind of a reasonable way to uh, store things. So I guess some people didn't get assigned seats and the driver's just saying like, just go sit anywhere. It's Greyhound, it's not my fault. And yeah, we're heading out and look at this. I'm as shocked as anyone. This, the, the website said this bus was sold out. So it might mean I get a seat made um, at one of the Vermont stops. But like, I'll take all the alone time I can get. You know, I was pessimistic at one point, but, but things are looking up. It's worth asking, by the way, why would I take Greyhound, especially an overnight Greyhound back from Montreal? Basically, the flights were insanely expensive, and the Greyhound was 81 bucks. Canadian Plus, it, it, it's good video fodder. So it's close to 11.40 right now. Here's the kind of dilemma. We're not gonna get to the border for another hour, so we'll get there at like 12.40, at which point we all have to get out of the bus and, and scan our, uh, do our passport checks. I just don't know if I wanna sleep. I think I wanna wait until after that border check, because I just don't wanna get woken up at the border. And it's a shame it's at night, because like, this whole trip is gonna be really scenic, like the, the farmland in Quebec and then the Vermont mountains, it's, it's beautiful, but uh, I had to do the overnight so I could make it back in time for work. Bye Montreal, it is always a pleasure. Sorry Rem, but we are beating you. Later. Okay, so we got there at like 12.45, it's now 1.15, um, we're about halfway through. It's very odd, once you finish, you come back onto the bus. So unlike when I took Flix bus to Toronto, where they kind of put us in a holding pin, um, here, it's just like, you just get back on the bus when you're done. So if I have any recommendation for this route, 
it's actually very worth it to pay a little extra for a seat up front because you will get through the line a lot faster. But yeah, it's pretty miserable in there. It's like two officers and you just wait in line at like very strict no cell phone policy. And it's a very quiet room so you're hearing everyone getting interrogated. It's kind of interesting to hear the gamut of different passports. A lot of people from France, a lot of people from Canada. Um, and they get grilled a lot more than the U.S. people. It was funny that there was uh, one person who said that she was a philosophy student and the customs officer was like, oh, do you know Jordan Peterson? I guess if you like eavesdropping uh, and seeing all these different passports and stuff, you should sit in the back of the bus so you can get to experience all that. But uh, I'm pretty happy to be done with it. We'll see you when we actually leave here. Um, hopefully not too long. All right, 134. So a little under 50 minutes later, we're pulling out. So we have this kind of gate thing we go through. There's the building, if you're curious. But yeah, now we're in the States, and uh, I think it's time to head to sleep. All right, we made it to uh, Burlington. We're right on time, so. Look at that, the Vermont State Capitol. They don't light it up very well at night. I'm actually kind of unimpressed. It's nice in the daytime, but I don't know. Anyways, it's, uh, it's not clear. White River Junction. We get some food and uh, use the bathroom. It's uh, a little before five. Now back in the day, my family would uh, go to Vermont every summer and uh, we'd always do a pit stop in White River Junction. So I'm very happy that Greyhound continued that tradition by doing an uh, extended rest period here. Two minutes later, we're here in uh, Hanover, New Hampshire, home to Dartmouth College. And since it's New Hampshire, live free or die. Why is the Manchester stop at the Boston Manchester Regional Airport? Or international? I don't know, but people are using it. We got in about 25 minutes late, which I think is entirely due to just like normal rush hour traffic compared to anything that Greyhound did wrong. Ultimately, that was just like an overnight bus trip that was the level of misery I would expect for an overnight bus trip without any additional Greyhound misery. And given that Greyhound is the only service that runs between Montreal and Boston directly, I, I, get, I can't say I don't recommend it. I mean, Greyhound out of Boston tends to be fairly reliable because it's usually just going from Boston to somewhere else and back. In the middle of the country, it's like buses get diverted all over the place. But Boston, the one, they're typically kind of self-contained. And also, I mean, I actually got really lucky because the website claimed the bus was sold out, but it never seemed to get there. Um, there were a few people who had um, both seats open, and I was one of them. Just very lucky, so I got to kind of stretch out a little more. I would say the two things that are really important. Number one, it's actually kind of worth paying for a front seat. Greyhound usually charges more, and it's like crap, like who cares? But like for this, if you get at the front of that customs line, you can get back onto the bus faster and get back to sleep, because they just send you right back onto the bus. The other thing is, and I need to start doing this more often, is like in the summer when you're traveling on a bus, you really gotta bring a blanket, because it gets so damn cold. Um, but that's just my fault for not doing that. But yeah, no, I mean, it was no more miserable than you would expect an overnight bus from Montreal to Boston to be. Go Greyhound and leave the driving to us. doing here the show's over go home